G'day everyone, uh, here we are back in our live show. Uh, we are in the pre-show here at the moment. Uh, it's a beautiful day outside. If anyone's worrying, wondering why I'm wearing these flowers at the top here, it's, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm using the new uh, tree AF or the flower AF to make sure that I'm in focus because I'm a little bit worried about the focus and how it's actually gonna go. If I hide the pre-show, you'll be able to see this a little bit more. Um, so this will certainly make sure that I nail focus and oops, see, look, I'm going to go out of focus if I'm not very, very careful. Hang on a second. I might put it up here. Oh, can't do that. Hang on, I've got to put it up here. That's, that's it. Look at this. Oh, gee, hard to maintain this focus setting. It really is. Hang on a second. Let me put that up there and this one in here. Now, this is definitely going to nail focus, guys. There's no issues at all. I can't believe people gave me thumbs down for that video. What's wrong with people? I mean, seriously, don't they understand that, you know, life is too short to be so serious? Um, but this will make sure that the focus is nailed for the whole show. I have got multi coffee right uh, here as well, so I'm really enjoying this. Mmm. So. What are we going to discuss today? I better put this pre-show back on so people know that I'm not. <laughs> you know what's going to happen? I'm going to get a thousand down votes again for today's show. <laughs> oh boy, oh, these, are, these are for Kerry, yeah, to make up for the um, camera that I bought just the other day. So I've got to make sure that, you know, I'm not in trouble. <laughs> oh, I've got to get rid of these. Oh, I've already had too many Coronas. I seriously have. Oh boy. <laughs> Let me go over to the chat. I love it. What a crack up. <clears throat> so Carl's saying hello. Um, Casper's uh, just saying hello. Carl's saying action. Fathom Rocker say, hey, you're David. How's it going, man? Sharif says, good day. Finally caught a live show from the start. That's fantastic. I'm going to lose subscribers again after today's episode. Um, Floria says, hello gang. Uh, David, those photos are from your lovely wife because you uh, returned the A65400, am I right? Haas says, it would be hilarious if the first time viewers click on the video and see you putting on flowers, I oh, know. <laughs> oh boy. <clears throat> James said, just curious, what did your wife say when she saw the roses? She just rolled her eyes when I told her what I bought. <clears throat> She's all right now though because I've um, sold a camera. I sold my little RX100. I thought I don't need it anymore due to the fact that it, I've now got the flip up screen with the A6400. Uh, I bought that for the flip up screen, so at least I've got part payment back for that as well. Casper um, saying laughing loud. Gerald says, hi all. Chris says, hello David from rainy snowy Los Angeles, but still a good Corona day. Ben says, looking hot mate. <laughs> uh, Ray saying laugh. Uh, my, Michelle said, hello, David. I suspect it was that other photographer that thumbed you down, probably. Aldrich's saying hello. DJ is saying hello there. First time here. Well, welcome, DJ. Uh, Troy said, should I report you? Perhaps. <laughs> I think I need to be locked up. <laughs> Alan says, hey, David. Jason says, can't wait for Troy AF. Going to be revolutionary landscape photography. Aaron saying, yo, g'day, Aaron. Um, I mean, the, the thing is... This is what cracks me up. I had that many people comment on uh, my YouTube site to say, you know, that you're just doing it for clickbait. I put a big thing in brackets to say, don't watch unless you have a sense of humor. Um, I wasn't doing that as clickbait at all. It was just a bit of fun. Now, now guys, the people that are following me have to understand that I have quite a weird and, and stupid sense of humor. If it's not the type of thing that you like to see, you're better off not to subscribe to me because I'm not gonna make my channel all about serious stuff all the time. Occasionally, I like to have a bit of fun. And you know, and most of you wanna have fun with me. And you know what, if it costs me subscribers at the end of the day, that's just the way it is. I'm not gonna change the way I am to suit uh, what other people want out of me. I am what I am, <laughs> you either take it or you don't. Um, unlike a lot of YouTubers, I suppose, I, I do try and bring a little bit of entertainment, even though it might be stupid. If you don't wanna watch it, don't watch it. But I'm not gonna change the way I am, guys. It's just the way I am. And obviously, if you don't like it, don't watch. Uh, it's just the way I am. I'm never gonna like, beg for that. For I'm never gonna change the way I am to get subscribers. I've told you that the, what you're seeing with me is me totally. 
and I'm not going to change that for anyone. <laughs> Uh, it's just a bit of fun anyway. But oh, it was incredible. What did I get on that? Oh, I can't remember. I got about 90 or 100 downvotes on that video and I got abused by so many people saying it was clickbait. They were going to unsubscribe. And <laughs> oh, it was funny. Anyway, life's too short, guys. You've got to have fun. Uh, so let's see who else is here before we start the show. For everyone you lose, you gain five more followers. <laughs> um, greeting. And the, the thing is, Altrick, that people that unfollow me for things like that don't like me as a person anyway. Uh, and it's not who I am. So <laughs> if they go, they go. Um, here I says, greetings, dude. Can't wait for the lens. Uh, it's going to be great. I'm going to talk about that very soon, actually. Rui's saying, hello, everyone. Aaron, I, I love to have fun. Me too, Aaron. And you've proved that with our other show that we do. Uh, Ray T's laughing. Altric says uh, you can click or you don't click and they get mad at you because they clicked on it. I oh, know. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. YouTube is nuts sometimes. Uh, I knew this was coming before the 70 to 200 told you all. Mm. Uh, Aaron says, please don't change. I'm not going to change, Aaron. There's no way. Um, Hero says, laugh out loud. We make more accounts to replace the ones that leave. Uh, Ray said, thumbs up. Gerald says, David, don't ever change who you are. We love the way you are. Cheers. Thanks, Gerald. Michelle said, I'm about having fun and great tree. <laughs> I, I think what, what I reckon was half of the problem with that was that um, people actually didn't know what it was all about. Now, I'm not going to mention names, but a few other people did mention names in the comments, but I'm not going to mention names who that was about. But it was clearly about a flawed review that I saw on YouTube there's been a couple of flawed reviews from the same person on YouTube talking about autofocus, and I just thought it needed to be, to be addressed with a bit of humour. Now, I could have mentioned names on it, but I didn't think that was appropriate, and I just thought I'm just going to do it anyway. And anyone that knows me uh, and knows really about Sony, we're going to know what that was about anyway, and most of you did pick up what it was about. Um, what else have we got? Ken saying hello, Eric saying greetings from Princeton. <laughs> I can't wait to see what they say about the start of this though. <laughs> uh, don't think I've ever seen you serious, Ben said. Altric, you're an Aussie, awesome Aussie, thanks. And we do have a weird sense of humour out here. Mike said hello there from Boulder. Zane said hi there you all. David, I don't see any marks. Went good with the credit card and the wifey. <laughs> yeah, she just rolled her eyes, Zane. Um, she was all right, but she just gave me that big roll of the eye and yeah, whatever. And I knew then. <laughs> uh, Glenn said, hello from Bahamas. Florio said, don't ever change, David, you rock. Thanks, Florio. Jamie said, hello, everyone from the home of Cyclone Oma. Um, unused Cheetah says, I, I see you survive. Yes, I did. I did survive it. Flowers work very well and I made a beautiful tea. Um... Haas says, I saw that clickbait comment. I love that you are genuine with your viewers. Majority of the photographers nowadays only showcase what camera companies want them to. And you're right, Haas, and that's that's probably why <laughs> someone like Sony hasn't used me for the recent Sony Artesian or whatever that they announced. You know, it probably is I'm a bit out there uh, and <laughs> I sort of say what I feel and I don't know how some companies handle that. Uh, but I am what I am, and I've told you before that I like to be honest with you guys. Um, it may cost me <laughs> certain things, but I'm going to be truthful. I'm just going to lower this exposure down a bit. <clears throat> um, Justin said you missed the Flora F comment. Oh, did I? I look, there's so many. I've got so many comments in the end, I couldn't keep up with it. Um, Lazarus returns from a dead after the A6400 purses. Yes, I did, Sam. It wasn't too bad. Aaron says, you know what's super funny right now? Your autofocus right now is all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I haven't got the TAF on me, Aaron. Um, M Spate says, hello, David. I feel like a fanboy. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Why do you say that? Casper said, there's a bunch of losers if they can't take a joke. There's so many people that are serious out there. I would hate, I love stuff. That's why I love camera conspiracies so much because it's just a bit of fun, a bit of take on stuff that's going on. Uh, you've seen me with a happy photographer and I'm certainly going to do some other photographers soon. So if you don't like that sort of thing, 
because I am going to do some others uh, when I get around to it. Uh, you might be better to unsubscribe. Uh, what else have we got? There are a bunch of losers. Oh, yeah, if you can't take the joke, worth it then. Fathom Rocker said, can we have some snowflake AF <laughs> in the Mark II, please? I'm going to get this now like the wall focus that I, I used to get all the time. Stacey said, made a live show, woohoo. That's good to see you here, Stacey. Uh, just bought the 16-35 F4. I love that lens. It's fantastic. But I will buy the Tamron 17-28. Uh, to 28. I'm going to talk about that very, very soon. Danny King said, hello from Naples, Florida. G'day, Danny. Uh, Ken said, what price point do you think the Tamron... Uh, well, I'm not sure. Uh, I would think it's possibly going to be around that same price as the Tamron 28-75. Uh, to 70, uh, five. I think it'll be around the same as that. <laughs> bokeh, 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 bokeh. I can't say it, bokeh. Uh, Altric said, would like to see your settings for shooting video with the A9. Yeah, I'll do that, Altric. I'm probably waiting for the A9 update though, just to see if things change, because it might, the firmware is probably gonna change totally. So I think I'll, I'll do a, a full um, settings on the A9 as soon as that firmware comes out. I'm gonna do the A6400 uh, in the coming days. Uh, I'll, I might even do the menu system today and post that tomorrow. Then I'm away for the weekend, uh, but I'm also gonna review the A6400 over the weekend as well. Uh, Lucas says, I join and you're laughing already. I can't help myself. Um, Sam said, why are there two thumbs? There's always thumbs down on this show. <laughs> it's, it's probably the flowers. Look, Sam, I get them every single show and it just cracks. I don't know why they watch in the first place because the show has only just started and I've got thumbs down. It probably was the flowers in the beginning. <laughs> oh... That coffee's very, very nice. Um, so I don't worry about the thumbs down. I'll get them every show. There's just haters out there. I think it's mostly jealousy, Sam. James said, for a second, I thought Sony added a new ambassador. <laughs> you got me. No, they won't. Oh, look at that. The focus is a bit iffy, isn't it? Weird. Let me just check on there. Is it staying in focus? Let me know about the focus on your side, guys. Is it jumping in and out? It's probably because I'm not wearing those trees. I'd like to know. Um, I'm just going back here. Thumbs up, everyone said. Zane said thumbs up. Thanks for that, Zane. Uh, hey there, David. Uh, if you really can't focus, get a thumbs down. What MM lens should every photographer have in their arsenal? Well, it, it depends. I love the, if, I'd love. i say if you only could choose one lens, I'd have a 35 because that's my favourite focal length. That's the one that I would choose over any lens at all. Yeah, so it is going in and out of focus. Oh. Let me just check on the back of the camera, guys. I'm just going to check it is set up right. Bear with me. Just have to see if that's better. I usually have center. I'm using the A7R at the moment. Um, I usually have center on, and I've now put it onto wide. So I'll see if that's any better. If it's not, I might go manual and just see if I can sit on there. Hmm. Let me know if that's any better. <laughs> Dodgy firmware update. Someone said on there. Yeah, it's a bit weird. It hasn't done that before, which is a bit strange. Yeah, I'm not sure. I have to see how it goes. Um, where else have we got the dome nose photo? <laughs> All right, anyway, we're going to start the, start the show, guys. Let me say start. And I'm just going to go to the Acer Images logo and I'll be right back. <laughs> G 
G'day everyone, I uh, hope this stays in focus. We've been having some issues. It's funny after all that focusing talk, I've had a bit of strange things happening this morning or, the, or lunchtime here. So hopefully it stays in focus. I'm just trying to see if it's any better now. I usually use center focusing. I'm using the A7R2, um, but I've now put it on wide area with face tracking on. So hopefully it'll stay uh, in focus. So most people were just saying hello. Um, and if it becomes an issue, the focus, I might just change the aperture. I'll see how we go anyway. It looks all right. All right, so what I'm going to talk about today, we've got a number of stories that we're going to go through today. Just for the people that did watch my previous video that I posted yesterday with the Tree AF, in case if you didn't get the joke, it was actually a joke. Um, it was funny how many thumbs down I got about that, but you've got to understand if you do follow me, I, I have got a bit of a wacky sense of humor. And occasionally I'm just gonna do videos like that out of the blue. That wasn't a clickbait video, it was actually sort of having a go at another YouTuber that was could not get his Sony camera to focus on two videos and I thought it was flawed. So I thought I'd answer it with a bit of a joke video. Um, and it's just my sense of humor, guys. If you hate that sort of thing and you want just serious reviews all the time, my channel is probably not for you. And, and look, I know that could cost me subscribers, but I want people to be similar minded like me that like to have a bit of fun, uh, have a bit of a joke. Uh, it often is the Aussie way as well. Uh, we are very like that. Uh, and as I've said to you before, that I'm always very honest with you guys and I'm not gonna change the way I am to suit others. It's just the way I am. And if you don't like that nutty, stupid sense of humor occasionally coming onto my channel like the happy photographer uh, and things like that, you might be better off not to watch. Uh, and again, I'm going to do some other photographers soon too. I'm going to do with some other skits and some others as well. I love doing it and it's so much fun. Uh, if you don't like it, it's too bad because it's my channel. Um, but like I said, it's just what I love to do. So, And it was all in a bit of fun. Um, I'm sure the guy that did that probably would have laughed as well when he watched the video. Well, he may not have, but I thought it was a lot of fun anyway. But thank you so much for everyone else that's supporting me. Uh, as I am, you know, to me, you guys are like a bunch of mates to me. Um, and women too, we include as mates. Uh, and I really do appreciate that you're having a good laugh with me. And most of the comments that I got on that video were so much fun to read through and such a laugh. And I really do appreciate that you like to have a bit of fun with me. Sometimes life is too serious and it really is. Life is very, very short. And to have a lot of fun with you guys and to lighten things up a little bit uh, means the world to me and just like as you know every time you've watched me on this show it's all about having a big cackle and a big laugh so anyway I've already got my coffee uh, ready to go let me just fill it up because I've had half of it already um, it's a nice frothy malty coffee um, you can just sort of see here there ah, lovely and if you can guys please give me a thumbs up it just lets other people know that I'm live it is still hunting that focus a little bit that's weird Anyway, let's go to the uh, first story, because I want to go through this with you. Um, so the Tamron uh, have announced a number of lenses coming up. Uh, there's three of them, I think, that they said they were going to announce, and a couple, a couple of these sound amazing. This, this SP 35mm 1.4, Tamron are actually saying that this is going to be the best lens 35mm on the market. And that's a big statement to actually have. So it's going to be really interesting... Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing out, Darren said, I forgot to undo the firmware. Uh, it's really interesting to see how good that will be if because they, they're, they're stating that they believe it will be the best on the market at that, uh, what are they saying? Um, it becomes the fastest current lens joining the existing 35mm 1.8 uh, CP line, calling it the embodiment of all optical technology and manufacturing know-how Tamron has developed to date. Um, they're just saying... The company isn't revealing much more detail, only they will offer fast, high precision autofocus. Uh, so that's one lens that's coming out. They're also releasing a 35 to 150. This is a variable lens, f2.8 to f4. Um, again, that's quite a nice focal length as well. But the one that really interests all of us is uh, the Sony version of this lens, which uh, is the uh, 17 to 28. Now, is there a picture of that on there? I've got a comparison video in a minute. I'm just trying to see if there's a picture. Yeah, that's it there. 17 to 28's there. Um, and uh, it seems to be really a, a nice lens. It's, it looks very similar in build quality to the uh, 28 to 75 lens. 
Um, they're saying, obviously, it's for A-series shooters. You can also use this on the A6500 or A6400. I'm going to do a test with that on the A6400 soon. Um, but it's saying that with noticeably smaller diameter, and it's also got the 67mm thread size, which I love on the 28-75. to It's equipped with a stepping motor, denoted as a RXD, or Rapid uh, Extra Silent Shooting Drive, to boost its appeal to videographers as well as still shooters. Now they're saying pricing is not available at this time. Um, but it, it plans to launch all three lenses in mid-219. So it looks like somewhere around June, somewhere around that. Now, if you want to look at a comparison uh, between, say, this and the G Master lens, you can sort of see the comparison there of how the two uh, will look. Um, you can see it is substantially smaller. If this is as good quality as the 28 to 75, uh, I'll probably get one. I mean, it, it, it really, the 28 to 75, I absolutely adore. And if this has the similar quality to that, I probably will pick one up. Um, but there is good news because, um, let me just open this for a second. Uh, Tamron have contacted me, uh, Australia. I am going to, I'm not sure when though, um, I contacted the supplier that does actually uh, distribute these in Australia and I will be getting a version to test of this lens uh, sometime. I don't know when yet, but obviously it'll probably be before it's released. Um, I just have to wait and see whenever uh, I can get my hands on it. But stay tuned for that because I will have an early review for you. Uh, really exciting about that. So uh, Tamron again are going to look after me like they did with the 28-75. to So stay tuned for an early review of this lens and to see how it performs, how it feels, how it compares to say uh, the Tamron 28-75, to how it compares to the G Master and things like that, and even how it compares to my 16-35 to F4 because it's probably going to be a similar price to that, you know, you would think uh, or a bit cheaper. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how that lens goes. I'm really excited about that. I have to thank Tamron <clears throat> for going to give me that opportunity as well. Uh, but stay tuned for that. I just couldn't mention anything before because um, it wasn't announced at that stage. So certainly stay tuned for that. Uh, so that's the first story. So I'm just going to open this up to see if you have any questions about that Tamron, what you're thinking about it. Where did I put show start? Uh, most people are just saying hello because it was just on this morning. Uh, they said the Pixel Peepers are giving you a thumbs down. Jan said the Panda. G'day Panda, good to see you in here. Uh, Mark says please do a full review of the new Tamron when it drops while wearing a grey Nuru jacket <laughs> and getting a Persian cat. Oh God, I love it. The A9 is 500 off at B&H. Uh, Florio is saying interesting seats, good times to pick that camera up. Um, Altric says, will the firmware drop at the beginning of the month? We, we don't know Altric, but I'm hanging out for that as much as you are. I can tell you that since I've used the A6400, the, the focus on that is, is I believe, better than the A7 III in the fact of the way the tracking works. Um, so, And I think the A9 is going to take that firmware or that tracking to another level. So I really think you're going to see a generational leap with the A9 as against what, say, the A7 III gives you. The eye autofocus is astounding. The tracking looked like to me, and I did test it with, the only thing I did with that test that I did, for some reason when I did that test, I actually used um, the wrong shutter speed because I, I was thinking I was shooting the video where I wasn't. It was really, I was doing the video, but it was really only to show how the autofocus performed. So when I did that video of Steph that you can see, it's a couple of videos back, all the images, not, like I said, 98% of them were in focus, but when I did blow them up, I could see there was motion blur, and it wasn't that the image was out of focus, but there was a little bit of motion blur in them because I only shot at one hundredth of a second, and she was moving around a little bit quickly to do that. So really, I should have upped uh, the shutter rate to capture that perfect frozen moment. Um, and that was the reason why I didn't show many of the images close up because I thought it wasn't fair on Sony to show that when really that was my mistake in shutter speed when I used 100. You can check it because if you look at the video, you can see that I'm shooting 100th of a second. Uh, and I actually had, I was shooting it at f1.8. Uh, the focus though uh, was focused. They were sharp. The eyes and everything were sharp. But like I said, there was a fraction of motion blur in a lot of the images due to the fact of that shutter speed was just too slow for how quickly Steph was moving back and forth and moving around. 
Um, so I've learned from that. That was a bit silly of me, but I was actually, like I said, I was thinking more of video rather than of stills when I was shooting that. It was just really to show you how the tracking worked. A few people were saying that sometimes that it looks like it's in focus, but it wasn't. Uh, it, it doesn't in life get focused, but it was for me. Like I said, 98% of them were in focus. There were a few images that were out of focus, but nearly all of them were in focus. So, you know, that, that was a really good result from Sony. But if the A9, and I do believe this is what's going to happen, with the A9 60 frames, uh, 60 uh, seconds doing what it does on the AF, um, I, I think that it's going to be a generational leap. So if you can afford the A9 and you see something special like there at B&H, uh, it might be a really good time to jump on board because I think that is going to be outstanding once that gets the same autofocus as the A6400, but it's going to take it to another level. Um, so let me keep going back onto these questions. Um, Mel says, I think we'll be stumped guessing who you are if you are Mimic Jaron Poland. Ooh. Uh, Coda says uh, that Tamron announces development of three, three new lenses. Nice, yes, they. And look, I think you're going to find with Tamron the next lens that comes out. I do believe will be a 70 to 200. Then you've got the Trinity. You've got that holy Trinity of lenses. You've got the uh, 17 to 28, the 28 to 75, and then you'll have that 75 to 200, or or it might be 190. I'm not sure how the lens will work because I've got a feeling they're still going to try and keep that filter size the same which I think is a really good thing. Now, a lot of people, some people are saying in the chat, uh, the chats that I've been looking at that, um, you know, they're a bit worried about the fact that it doesn't have 16 mil. Well, I very rarely shoot 16, so I'd be quite happy to have 17, and that doesn't really bother me at all. I do have a 16 to 35, but very rarely do I shoot at 16 mil. So having the 17 wouldn't bother me at all. If clearly... If you do shoot at 16 a lot, that lens may not be for you and you may want to go for something like the 16 to 35 GM. But for the price that you're getting this, you could purchase the uh, 17 to 28 because I know it's going to be around the price of the, the 28 to 75. That's what I believe anyway. I don't know that's for sure. I'm just guessing. But the price you're paying for that, you could then also buy a really good wide angle prime, you know, a, tw a 12 mil or something like that. Uh, for the same money that you'd be, say, paying to get a G Master. So that's another way that you could look around this as well. Uh, you could probably get the 17 to 28, and then in the same money, get a 12 mil, something like that, uh, if you wanted to get a really nice wide lens. So it's certainly something to think about. But I think it's quite exciting. And, and if they can, say, have that trinity of lenses, particularly if you're getting with... Um, someone that hasn't got the money to buy the GM lenses, and then if you're a wedding photographer or something like that, or an event photographer, and you can get the, uh, say, the 17 to 28, the 28 to 75, and the 70 to 200 mil, or whatever that is, you're covered for everything that you, you want to shoot uh, for a reasonable price. Uh, you know, and you could almost get three of those lenses and not be paying much more than you'd, say, pay for a 70 to 200 G Master. So that's incredible if you think about that. And it's certainly something to consider if you want to come in a little bit lower in money, but certainly have the quality that's really good. Uh, the 28 to 75 is equally as good as any um, G Master lens that I've used. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with it. The focus is amazing. It, it feels like a native Sony lens. Sony have given it the ability to work like a Sony lens uh, in every way. You can even update it through the camera like you can with other Sony lenses. Remember, Sony own, I think it's 30% of Tamron or, or some figure. So they are definitely giving Tamron some advantages uh, towards that because Sony get money back from that anyway. Uh, and that's a great thing. So, you know, seriously, just wait for the, the review that I put out, guys. It should be really interesting to see. Uh, let me check a couple more of these. Uh, focal range of only f11 for the Tamron should be very light and hopefully just as cheap. Um, are you saying it only goes to f11? Is that what you're saying? Um, what else have we got? Um, oops, went down too far, it jumped it out down too far. Um, G'day, Camera Conspiracies. Good to see you in here, mate. Um, where else are we? Oh, I hate that because it jumps to the bottom sometimes. Um, Mel said, just... 
<laughs> Someone said, just put some branches in front. I'm going to have to go down anyway. I'll keep, I'll keep going. G'day, photo man. Good to see you in here. Um, Stacy says he likes stupid nutty. Um, Panda says, take ev- uh, people take everything too seriously and need to flow with life. G'day, Sue. How are you? Um, P- Camus Compuses has said, 17 to 28 is like a mating call. <laughs> Oh boy. You know what? We should seriously ha- have you on a guest on here one time. I'd love to have you on a guest on here and we could have a chat between us. We'd probably send the internet off with our nuttiness. Um, Fathom Rocker said, Photomeic, I will check right now. What's that? Um, uh, Photomeic said, It's huge and heavy, but it's getting the job done and I enjoy it. Are you talking about the 2470 Photomeic? I'm not sure. Um, Fedemex says, KC, man, I wish you were coming to WPPI. You're so close now that you're back in Toronto. Um, Camera Conspiracy says, I might go to WWP (laughs) now that he's a pro photographer. He actually wants me to hire him as my second shooter. But I said, I I said to KC this morning that, um, mate, after looking at those photos that you just posted in that video you just did, I should be working for you because you are an artist uh, and I should probably be working for you. The picture of the dog poop, genius. That's all I can say. Um, Chris said 70 to 35 uh, for sure, 2.8, yes. Um, Tamanisa sent me one, Panda says. Um, Aaron said conspiracy, I see your amazing photos. I know that it was a crack up that one. Um, Phonomix says, ha ha, lots of vloggers will be there too. I'll be vlogging so you can live, uh, live through me. Um, Jason said, real pro photographers leave the 10 second timer on. You know, the funny thing, I laugh so much when Casey did that because I do that all the time. I keep forgetting I've got it on. The sad part is I'll do it for about three shots after before I forget to turn the timer off. It annoys the hell out of me, but I do it all the time. Uh, particularly if I'm shooting weddings and I'm doing uh, time lapse because I like to use uh, the timer on time lapse, uh, the self timer, and then I always forget to turn it off and I go to capture that moment and all I get is beep, beep, beep. It drives me nuts. Uh, Aaron says, that's cool. You'll test the Tamron. Yeah, I will be testing it, Aaron. Um, Fatimix says, Tamron with another home run. Yeah, it's getting, it seems to be getting really good. Like, I... I think the way that Tamron produced lenses now, I'd say Photomeic that that'll be a fantastic lens. It'll be probably equally as good as the uh, 28 to 75. Eric said, I think the AF is trying to grab the mannequin. Um, yeah, it's still a little bit out, I reckon. I don't know what's going on with it today. You'll just have to bear with it. It's a bit annoying, though. Uh, Brandon says, I haven't heard much about your uses on the DJI Osmo. You know, the funny thing is I've hardly touched it, Brandon. I've been too busy to actually use it. Um, I I do intend to use it sometimes, but I still, the problem for me is I love the look of the A9 uh, at 1.8 on the gimbal so much that the second I try and use the Osmo, it tends to look more like uh, an iPhone result because everything is so sharp. So... I've been hesitant to use it. It doesn't mean that I won't, but I have been hesitant to use it because uh, I love that A9 look so much. Um, Photomix said, man, we are so lucky to have such a great selection of cameras and lenses. I know. Tamron and Sigma used to be like trash like 10 years ago. Now things have changed. Yeah, I I used to use Sigma when I had the Nikon uh, D850 and the D4S, uh, the D810 uh, Photomeric, and I used to love that. I had the 35 1.4 and loved it. Um, Like the 17 to 28, but pissed that the 70 to 200 E mount was not announced. It's going to come. It's just a matter of when. Um... Aaron said he loves his Osmo Pocket. Yes, he certainly does. We had a discussion about that on our other show. Um, Devin said, camera conspiracies, the manufacturer will escort you away from the booths. (laughs) I love it. Fathom says, I can't wait for the Tamron. I was just about to pick up the 16 to 35 F4. Uh, so you so glad I didn't. I've got that. I've got that lens. It's not here, is it? No, I do have that lens. Um, I still love it. Uh, but I, I, if that is amazing, if it really is amazing, uh, the 17 to 28, I may sell that one and get and just keep the 17 to 28. I'll have to have a look. Um, Dylan says I need a sensor that's bigger than a baby duck, though. Um, 
Triple says Amazon is offering low payments for 18 months on all camera stuff. Interesting. Um, I'm going to go to the next story in a second, guys. Stacy said, I cannot wait for you to do the test of the 17 to 28 f2.8. I absolutely love my 28 to 75 Tamron. Yeah, I just don't know when yet, though, because I believe they're going to show it at WPPI, but I'm not sure when Tamron Australia will get those lenses out here for, for demonstration, so hopefully soon. Uh, I'll keep you updated, though. Uh, Justin said, did the A6400 tracking seem slow? No. Uh, it seemed uh, that way on the video. Curious if the A7S and... Look, the A9 will be faster. Uh, the A7S, we don't know because it, it's not released yet. The A9 will definitely be faster due to that, that uh, sensor that's in it. Uh, remember, you're dealing with 60 frames per second or tracking per second. Um, that will definitely be faster. But no, I wouldn't say it was slow at all. Um, there may have been a little bit of lag due to the HDMI going into the recorder, um, but when I test it without that and just testing it, it's, it's extremely fast, extremely fast. Um, Panda says, Canon lenses are so nice. Yes, they are. Canon lenses are absolutely amazing. They really are. Fathom says, uh, I'm going to be right on that pre-order. I'm not missing out on this lens. Yeah, if you want the Tamron, guys, the only thing I can say to you is, if you want it early, you must pre-order it. Because remember how hard the 28 to 75 was? This is going to be probably harder. Because now, people know how good those lenses are. Last time, there was a lot of focusing issues and things, remember? Uh, if this comes out and they nail it instantly, which they probably will, they probably learnt what was wrong from that first release of the 28 to 75. If that comes out and it's perfect, uh, I bet you that this will be uh, hard to get for a few months. Um, what else have we got? Well, just trying to see. Uh, 2470 is a badass. The RF, yeah, it's beautiful, that 2470. Canon lenses are amazing. They really are amazing. Uh, I don't shoot much at 24 mil. I mostly shoot 35. That's my favorite focal length. 35 and 85 are my two favorite focal lengths. They're still a must to have for me. Um, 17 more than wide enough for me. I'm, I'd be the same, Chris. 17 is no problem. I think it's about six mil. So if, if you're dealing with uh, having a camera that is, say, the Tamron uh, 17 mil as against the 16 mil, I think you're dealing about six mil overall in image width. Like I said, if that's a problem for you, uh, you'd need the 16. Or, like I said, you could buy the uh, 17 to 28 and then also use the money that you save to buy a really good prime that's, say, a 12 mil or something like that. Um, Sam said, what happened to the 150-500? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. Victor said, it's so nice to have a wide angle uh, for when you need it. It sucks not having it and I need it. Yeah, my, the, my only real wide angle at this stage is the 10 to 18, the APS-C lens. I can use that on full frame at 12 mil. So if I need 12 mil, I use the 10 to 18. I, I sort of have been thinking constantly about getting a prime. I've just never got around to doing it. Um, but... I often use uh, the 12, uh, the 10 to 18 on 12 mil on full frame, and, and it's quite good for the results it gives. There is a bit of distortion though, you have to be aware of that. Don't put anything critical uh, near the edges. Uh, you know, have it ne more near the center and it will look fine. Also, it is only an F4 lens, um, so yeah. Um, Keeps jumping sometimes, so sorry if I miss your comment, guys. Um, Mel said, I still have the Tamron 17 to 35 f2.8 for Canon. I paid 700 US uh, about for that over a decade ago. My guess is the 17 to 28 will be around 899, give or take $50. Interesting. Uh, Luke says, If you're comparing about no 16 millimeter, learn how to compose. My guess is uh, 1299. Florio says, how about Sony partnering with Light? Yeah, well, that, that's interesting. It's only going to relate to camera photos, uh, to cameras, though, uh, phones. That's why I sort of never mentioned that. I think that's where that's going to be. But again, it's just another win, I suppose, for Sony. That Light camera more or less has disappeared. Um, 
but it certainly is an interesting partnership and you don't know where that may go in the future and it's it, it's interesting. Uh, Devin said, oh, I was just talking to Fana Miek. Um, Zame says, another weird focal length from Tamron, don't you think? I really would have liked something wider like 12 to 24. No, I don't think it's weird, Zane, because remember, these are the Trinity lenses that, that sort of 16 to 35, this is, replaces that, the 17 to 28. They've already got the 28 now, so that matches it. It's an exact focal length when you swap over. Uh, and then obviously a 70 to 200 will come out at all. So I don't find that a weird focal length at all. Uh, 42 Pro says, late to the party, but my name is on the pre-order list for the 17 to 28. Yeah, like I said, I think you'll find a lot of people will jump on this pre-order. And my suggestion is to pre-order as soon as you can if you do want it, guys. Um, remember, too, that you can always pre-order. And if it's not delivered, I'm pretty sure places like B&H let you cancel that order. And you'd sort of see from reviews like mine that are going to come up eventually uh, that whether you think the lens is going to be any good for you or not. Um... Jason said, Casey, uh, Florida says, hi, camera conspiracies. We love you a long time. <laughs> that only happens in Thailand, doesn't it? Um, two nuts don't make a nut, but makes a, makes cracks. Oh, I laugh. Tim said, only 11 millimeter range for the Tamron. Uh, most have the 19 millimeter range. Should uh, be a lot lighter and smaller. Yeah, it's, it's, it is going to be very, very small. I mean, when you look at that size through here, um, you know, when you look at that size there, you can sort of see how tiny it actually is. And that can make a big difference, particularly if you're going to stick it on a gimbal or something like that. This will be a great gimbal lens. Uh, it really will. Uh, and that's something that I may be interested for with this. Um, but I just think it's a win-win sort of situation, really. Um, ha says, David... Today, my Tamron 28 to 75 copy on the A6500 and some strange focus issues. It would only grab that face uh, after half pressing the shutter two to three times. Any thoughts? No. I haven't tried it yet on those cameras, Huzz. I'll have to try it and let you know. That's a bit weird, though. Did you take the lens off and then put it back on? Uh, Phonomix says, uh, it can't be any more than 1099 At that price, it can still move units. Yep. Um... Dublin says, a dog poop was not real. It, it was made from hot dog plants. Um, Gerald says, Fatimek, I agree with you. We'll be under 1,000 United States dollars. Roscoe said, hope Tamron will release a 150-500 before the fall. I think it's clear that Tamron are going to start really pushing lenses out as quickly as they can manufacture them. I, I suppose uh, the problem is with Tamron, they're also making lenses for, well, it's not a problem, but it's a problem for us Sony users. They're also making lenses for Canon and for Nikon, uh, you know, and they're probably selling a lot of these lenses. So like any manufacturer out there, they can only uh, produce so many units for each system at that one time. Uh, you are clearly going to see more lenses from Tamron for the FE mount though, because they can't make them quick enough. So, you know, I still predict we'll probably see a 70 to 200 sometime this year. I'm hoping uh, it's going to be late this year. If not, it may be that they'll do this the same time as this has come out early next year. But I'm hoping there will be sometime this year. Uh, but again, at least they're still producing stuff that you can use. Uh, and, and we certainly are winning now if you're talking about from a Sony perspective, though. Um, Mr. says, I need that lens for vlogging and wide cinematic shots for music video. Yeah, it'd be great for that. Um, Adrian says, David Oson and Camera Conspiracies, my two favourite channel uh, channels for camera news and or comedy. Um, Tony says, I already have the Samyang 40. Perfect. Uh, that I honestly don't use so much. So as mainly, mainly a portrait shooter... Uh, would I get more use out of the new Tamron? Well, if you're a portrait shooter, yes. But I think if you're a portrait shooter, you're better off with the 28 to 75 due to the fact that you're getting that 20, that 75 mil, which is getting closer to that perfect uh, range of, say, 85 mil. So I think if you're a portrait shooter, uh, you'd be better with the 28 to 75. Um, Chris said, is the 17 to 28? Yes, it, it's going to be a 2.8 lens. Visual says, David, have you ever uh, reduced contrast from camera settings? No. I, I keep my settings as they are. They're all standard. Uh, I'll, I'll put sort of some of those figures up soon for you, Visual. If you're interested in how it looks, when if you look at the video I just posted of Kiara recently, if you go down a few, you'll see it. Kiara in Melbourne. 
Everything is stock standard in that. I haven't changed anything at all. Um, Philip says, renting the Tamron 28 to 75 for my trip to Jamaica in two weeks. Uh, fantastic, and it works so well with the A7 III. We're gonna have to move on in a minute. Uh, I had no problems finding the 28 to 75 at a local camera shops, but it was sold out everywhere online after the release. Yeah, you might only now be, I went, when I bought my A6400 the other day, they had a 28 to 75 in the shop. So obviously now it's starting to be available uh, in stores now, but it's taken a long time, basically 12 months. Victor said, uh, unused to buy, uh, used to buy B&H till they started taxing us. Now I buy Adorama, okay. Um, 42 Pro says the 17 to 28 will be awesome on a gimbal and that's one reason why I may think about getting it with the Super 35 crop in video on the Sony's wedding uh, on the Sony's wedding videographers should be shouting hip hip hooray yeah it'll be fantastic for that uh, focal length um, third Tamron will most likely be the 70 to 210 yeah it probably will be something around that range I hope it's not an f4 though I do hope it's an f, uh, I do hope it's a f2.8 you're saying it's not possible due to physics uh, at that size, at the filter size. Um, Chris said, will Tamron release the 35 1.4? Probably eventually, Chris. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it works though with the MC11. I mean, it will be interesting to see how it works with that. Let me see if it'll focus. What are your thoughts on the 17 to 28 for Astro? Don't know because I don't do astrophotography, Charles, so other people may be able to answer that. I think you're better off with prime uh, wide angle lenses, I think. Um, do you think Sony will add more features that they didn't mention to the firmware? They may, Altric, we just don't know. Um, Eric said, close to seven millimeter focus distance will be nice. I know, how cool will that be on that lens? Um, so I'm thinking Tamron launches the 75 to 210 next instead of the 70 to 200. Yeah, we just don't know. Anyway, let's go to the next story. So next story is this, it's just a, a Sony, uh, let me just open this up. Oop, need to go there. Um, it's an SR5 on the Sony Alpha Rumors that they, they've got an announcement on February the 25th and 26th. It looks like that's when the 135 is going to be announced. Uh, and some uh, more lenses. Now, now, they're not saying what other lenses those are. Hopefully, for a lot of you that want cheaper lenses, we may get the 35 1.8. I know a lot of you are, are, are really hanging out for a, a cheaper version of the 35. I'm using the 35 2.8 at the moment now when you're looking at me uh, through here, YouTube. Uh, and I love that lens. I, I really do. It's tiny, uh, sharp. Um, usually focus is great, but I don't know what's going on today with focusing. Um, but um, the 135 certainly interests me. <laughs> I can't get that at the moment or Kerry will, I'll seriously be in trouble with Kerry. If I go past a camera store and come home with a 135 GM, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll really be in trouble at the moment. Um, but it's certainly a lens that does interest me somewhere down the line um, because I've always wanted to try that 135. Uh, so hopefully I can get a hand of it somewhere and give it a go. Uh, but, the, but the 35 1.8 is a real interest for a lot of you. Now, a lot of people are saying that um, they love the 85 1.8. Uh, that is really a, an incredible lens, particularly for the price. That's the beauty of that lens. Now I have the Ballast, which is more expensive. That does have stabilization though. So that will give you an advantage if you're using an A6400 because the lens is stabilized. Um, but um, if you want a really good sort of double lens for the A6400 uh, or a A7 III, I should say, uh, a cheap version of that lens is the 85 1.8 and it's a beautiful lens, the 85 1.8. If Sony could bring out a 35 1.8 to work with that, it's great for your hip pocket because it's gonna be cheap. And I'd also say if it's as good as the 85 1.8, it's gonna be fantastic. So hopefully, that's one of the other lenses that they'll bring out. So they're saying that this announcement is gonna be um, on the 25th and 26th um, of this month, um, which is WPPI, isn't it? And it's probably there. Um, they're saying down here what to expect. They're saying that um, here that a 135, I think they're saying is a given now. 
hopefully some other new E-mount lens. 100 1.4, 500 f4, and 600 f4 have been patented. So that's what they're saying may come out at this stage. So they may be going to add those new longer lenses, particularly seeing uh, the push for the A9 is coming out with that new firmware. Uh, they may be now trying to push out in the long range, particularly due to the Olympics uh, being there next year. So they might announce these lenses, whether they're going to be sort of available on the day, they may just be announced. Hopefully uh, the 135 will be there that people can have a play around with that. And you never know, we may get that, like I said, the 35 1.8. Uh, but they're saying down here, also rumoured our possible launch in 219, oh, they're saying there, is the 35 1.8G and a new APS zoom uh, lens. So they, they really do need to give some love to the APS-C cameras that are out there. They really haven't got much love at all at this stage uh, for that mount. When I'm going to talk about Sigma soon, about how they're supporting it. Uh, but Sony aren't really supporting it at this stage, which is a bit of a shame. But it looks like we may be going to get at least one new lens announced. Hopefully it'll be a few more. Hopefully a few more rumours will be sort of uh, come out. Well, not rumours. Hopefully they'll announce this 100, the 500 and the 600 mil. What do you, I'd love to know what you guys think in the chat about the 100 1.4. Do you think that's going to destroy the STF lens, uh, the 105? I'd love to know what you think about that. Oh, no, it's 100, isn't it? Um, let me know what you think about that as well. They're saying what not to expect. Uh, no A7S 3 yet. And they're saying there is a, a reliable rumour about the new E-mount camera launch within June. So they're now saying that we're going to have to wait halfway through the year now before we get this camera announcement, uh, is that it will be announced... Uh, but it shouldn't be announced yet at the WPPI show. My guess is that it will be announced in May to June. So that's... A little bit of a disappointment so it looks like lenses yes it looks like now we're not going to get any camera bodies announced uh, at all unless they just have not hit the rumor sites at all and that would be quite uh, rare I think um, a7s just keeps getting delayed and delayed um, I think now with the a6400 just being announced and just in the stores now I don't think there's any chance now we're going to see an a7000 um, reasonably soon um, so we're just waiting like everyone else. Uh, and now, at least now that I've got this, you know, with the fold-up screen, that I can use this now as um, my blogging, uh, vlogging camera, and I can use it for YouTube. Uh, I still would be hesitant to use it for a page shoot or anything like that due to the fact that it hasn't got the dual card slot, so that's, that's an issue for me. Like I said, I'm going to give it full testing over the weekend, uh, so I'll let you know how it actually goes when I do that testing. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. But I don't think we're going to see an A7000 yet for a while, um, particularly now that the A6400 is, is just being released. And the A7S, I'm not quite certain what's going on with that, whether they are having issues with heating in the camera um, that they can't overcome at 4K60, um, you know, and they're trying to solve all these sort of things before they bring that out. The other aspect too is that, you know, I've thought about this quite a lot, is the fact that too, Sony haven't been pushed with anything full frame yet. So that's an issue for us Sony users. It really is an issue. Now, I'm not surprised that they brought out the A6400 because they sort of did have to answer the X-T3 uh, and also the X, um, what is it, X-T30, or I think that's the uh, new uh, Fuji that's come out. So Sony have had to answer those cameras and they have answered it in a way with the A6400. Uh, there's certain features I like better with the A6400, like certainly the flip-up screen, but there's cert certain features in the X-T3 that um, are better in uh, bit depth and, and video formats, but remember you're paying a lot more for the X-T3. The X-T3 will be challenged with something like an A7000 that will come out uh, eventually, so we've just got to wait for that. So Sony haven't answered the X-T3 yet, but they certainly have answered the sort of entry uh, level Fuji camera, that X-T30 that's come out. Uh, I think this uh, answers that camera with no problem at all. Um, so it, it's interesting times. So we are going to get more, but full frame wise, like I said, I don't think we've been challenged yet. Um, and I think until we're challenged, there's no rush for Sony to bring anything like the A7S III out, unfortunately. So we may just be waiting. They, they may wait again until Canon release their high-end model later this year sometime and then have an answer to that. 
Uh, we don't know. I do believe that Canon are going to put out a high-end model. I, I particularly believe that because the lenses that are announced don't match the bodies that are announced at this stage. The lenses are clearly way better than what Canon have got in bodies. Um, so I do believe that somewhere this year they're going to announce a, a really high-end full-frame camera. And that may be one that Sony are holding off to uh, release an A7S III to combat that when it's announced. I don't think it's definitely not been beaten by anything at the moment, like the Nikons haven't beaten it. The Nikon is good, uh, particularly if you're dealing with video. I think it's actually really quite good, but it, it's crippled with the single card slot, for instance, and it really is crippled for that. Uh, it's crippled a little bit in, in low light focus. It hunts a little bit. The, the Canon, uh, the, the RP is just a disaster. The R is, is again, crippled again, it's got that ridiculous crop on board, it's got the dual uh, single card slot and flawed focus the second you go into 4K. Like, like it's, it's their problem. So the, the Panasonic, I don't think uh, tackled Sony either. You know, it's got contrast detection, which is just nuts. I can't understand why they did that. There's no flip up screen on that either. So I don't think Sony has been challenged at all, guys. And, that, and that's a problem for you. And that's why I said to you all along that competition is very good for us. So let's open that up to the chat just to see what people are saying. This is going to be a long show again, but we can't get over it. Um, I'll just have another drink of my multi coffee. No fisheye lens. Uh, Alan, Alan says 135GM price speculations. Is gonna, I've got no idea it's going to be expensive though. It's really going to be expensive. Look at the um, uh, 85GM price, the 85 1.4, and you'd add a, a fair bit of money on top of that. Uh, Gene says, looking forward to the 17 to 28 Tamron. By the way, are you will you be using the A6400 for live stream? I use the A6300 with the 4K cam link, and the focusing isn't uh, as great in low light with the 28 f2. Uh, not sure. I, I do like to just use this actually, the A7R. But today it's been playing up a bit. I don't know why. Uh, is the focus still? Let me know in the comments, guys. I'd love to know. Has the focus been reasonable since I changed it to wide area? Uh, love to know what you, how you've been finding the focus with it at the moment. It's usually rock solid, but today it's not for some reason. Um, but yeah, I probably won't use the A6400 for live streaming, Gene, no. Um, I've got the, uh, I, I quite like the A7R too. I like the full frame look. It's got that tiny lens on it, the 35 f2.8, and it seems to go uh, quite good. Alan says 2,198. Yeah, it's going to be an awful lot in Australia. Uh, yeah, let me know how the focus is going, guys, in the live chat. I'd love to know. Um, Panda says, Photo Kina, it seems like uh, it will be when it's released. Yeah, maybe. Altric said, how good is the Sony 51.8? Well, I tried that and I didn't like it very much, Altric. Uh, I would get the 55 1.8. I know it's more expensive, but I didn't like that 51.8. Others may be able to chime in there. Uh, I didn't find it very sharp. I just didn't like it. Um, Trev says, the more time goes on, the more it uh, really seems like they pull the A7S to rework it. Yeah, you may be right. It makes sense given the numbers of rather good cameras that are out. Um, a little soft in the eyes. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with it. It's weird. It's usually really good. Um, I'll have to have a look at it when I'm off camera and just see if I can sort that out after the show. Um, Canon may release a high-end camera for stills, but it will do nothing for video. Interesting. Uh, you're saying they're going to protect their uh, CF the C700. Um, Hart says, focus seems uh, like usual, maybe not right on the eyes, but still great. Okay. Justin said, a little soft in the eyes. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but oh well. Uh, Trev says, uh, the Dark Horse is the Nikon uh, Z6 and the Z7, which are now working with the Atmos. Yeah, and that's great. Like I said, uh, they, and they seem to have uh, improved things with the firmware update that they got out recently. It's more, I, I honestly would have really liked to look at that camera if it had the dual card slots. And I, I can't believe they crippled it in that regard so much. Like I said, I'm never going to shoot a camera for paid jobs again that have that. Um, so it, it's a problem and they really should have fixed that. Nikon have got a definite uh, better release than what Canon have done though. Uh, way better in their releases. You know, you can go to the Atmos um, 
Ninja V now, uh, you know, and put out those that high res uh, video files that are going through there. It really seems to be that they've got a really good video camera involved. Uh, and I suppose if you're going out to that anyway, you don't need the dual slots anyway. Uh, but the Nikon is probably the biggest challenger, yes. I agree with that. Um, Shaku said, is the A7R2? Yes, it's a great camera. Really good camera. I just haven't bought it because I'm happy with the A7R2. But it's still a great... Um, a great uh, camera. David, I've noticed it's shifting to your ears back to the glasses. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that today. Because normally it's rock solid. It's weird. Not sure. Yeah, don't know guys, sorry about that. I'll have to see if I can um, fix it before the next one. You know what it may be, it might be the um, thing. Let me adjust the autofocus and I'll see if it fixes it. I'm gonna drop the f-stop up, so bear with me just for a second because I wanna see if I can fix this. I'm gonna to have to up the ISO a little bit. All right, let's see if that helps. Help, tell me if that helps. I've gone to f5.6, um, so let me see if it goes. Yeah, it still looks a bit soft when I'm looking at it there though, but let me know whether that has helped at all. Uh, now I may also change it to center focus and let's see if that fixes it. So I've gone on now to center AF. Um, I've gone to 5.6, and uh, so I've just upped the ISO. Let me know, has that made any difference at all? It should have in theory, because I've upped the, uh, I was doing, <laughs> I'm just laughing, it just put a leaf on your head. Um, I was going at 2.8, so I was on 2.8, now I've gone to 5.6. Let me know if that's any better, uh, just be curious. I love seeing Inc saying his, his A7R is having problems because uh, he was talking about the, AC, A, the Z6 talk. <laughs> Let me know if that made a difference. I'd love to know. Um, is the A7R... Yes, it is still an amazing camera. It is incredible. Um, Stephen said, good afternoon. G'day, Stephen. Gian says, uh, Panasonic may be the only one to challenge Sony. Well, it may. We still don't know how that camera is going to be yet. Uh, it may be a great... I'm still worried about the focus, though. That's the issue with that Panasonic camera, is that contrast, detection, focus. Um, I had the... Uh, Atom Masker says, I had the 51.8, and it was sharp as the 85 1.8 for the price. Uh, it was great. Focus was slow, but I used it for... Uh, used manual mode for portraits. Let me just see if people are saying about the focus. Yes, David, still soft. It's tack sharp in the back collar, but for some reason it's not grabbing the eye. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. Jeez, I'm going to look handsome now. I wonder if I've turned... Eye autofocus is on. I'm sure it is. I don't know what's going on there. Um, maybe you don't have <laughs> the tree, new tree AF. I love it. More trees. Uh, it requires plant AF. Um... You offended the uh, uh, A7R2 by talking all about tree AF stuff. Uh, the camera didn't change focus when you put your hand up. Yeah, it's not. Oh, it is. It's just slow. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm. Uh, having a what? Wolf pup multi coffee. <laughs> Too close. All right, let's go next story. Someone just asked too about, uh, Gerald says, are you more interested in the 135 GM or the 100 1.4? Well, I'm not sure, Gerald. I'm really not certain which one I'm going to go for uh, there. So uh, 
I'm gonna probably have to try both and then have a look. Now, guys, I'm, this is annoying the hell out of me because I still reckon I'm out of focus. I'm gonna try, but then if I do manual focus, I'm not gonna be able to get to it. All right, I'm gonna go manual focus, bear with me. I'm gonna put Susie in the chair and focus on her. Hang on. All right, say hello to, <laughs> I'm gonna get her to sit. All right, say hello to Susie. I'm gonna go manual focus. Okay, so. So hopefully, now I've just got to get in that perfect position. Hopefully now it won't drift. Let me know, is that any better? Oh, it's probably no better. Oh, we'll have to see anyway. Well, I'm on manual focus now, so I can't change it. All right, so let's go to the next story. Yeah, normally it's, it's, normally it's rock solid. Um, so I don't know why it's drifting today. It's a bit weird. It really is. I'm going to have to test that after the show. Okay, so let's go here. I wanted to discuss this with you because this is really, I don't know what's happened here. I mean, what on earth, I've got to move that way. What on earth, um, could have happened here that I don't even know if this is true. I don't know whether this guy, look, I'm not saying he's a lie, but I don't know whether, I'm just going to move that a bit. I don't know whether... He's, apparently you can buy the top plate of this camera for not much money at all, I believe. Now, whether he's done this deliberately and swapped the top plate so that it's got the A6300, it shows that they're obviously both the same. Uh, and then it's obviously showing that it's an A6400. So he bought the A6400 when he took it home. So you can see here that it's the A6400, but on the top of the camera, it's showing a 6300. I don't even know how this is possible um, because I would have thought they were completely different manufacturing. Uh, so I don't know what's going on here. I mean, it'd be a, certainly be a collector's piece if this is true. Um, but I don't know, I'm a bit suspect. Are you guys suspect about this as well? Do you think this is possible or do you really think that something bodgy is going on? This was a, a, a done in Thailand apparently and it was a Thailand um, guy that bought this. Uh, love to know your thoughts on this because I'm not sure about what I feel about this at all. Uh, I, like I said, I don't know how it's even possible because you would think if there was one, there would have been a number of these because uh, it would, the, the whole production line, I can't see how you get one wrong top in there. Um, but I don't know, it looks to me like it's been switched. What do you think? I'd love to know in the chat, guys. I'm going to quick click to it to see what you guys think. Now I've got to move that again, don't I? Is that right? Yeah. Um, it looks like the stream is 360. Yeah, I know. That's what's weird. That's what I thought too. Like it doesn't look like it's anywhere near the quality that's you. Oh, I wonder. No. I, I don't know. Perhaps I'm going to have to look at that. I wonder if... See, I took it off the other day when I was playing around and I wonder if I've changed the HDMI settings on that and it's only coming out at, at uh, 360 because it does look like it's a bit fuzzy. It's not as sharp as it normally is. So yeah, I'm going to have to... I'll have to play around with it when we uh, are finished. I'll fix it hopefully before the next one that comes out. Yeah, it does look a bit... Is it? Does anyone else see that it looks a bit like it's uh, not a 1080 stream? Uh, love to know. Um... That, of course, it's not an A6300. Either he's ordered the wrong camera or he's been scammed. Someone could have even switched the camera in the box. It's an interesting scenario, and I don't know how it's even possible. That's why I said I do believe you can buy the top part of these um, cameras. You can buy the top plate. 
uh, and that's probably what's happened here and it's been switched by someone. So I'm, I'm not sure what's gone on there, but it is very, very weird. It, it really is weird uh, how that could happen. Like I said, the way these production lines go, I can't see how an A6300, one of them, could have got onto that production line. I would have thought there would have been way more, but uh, it's it's interesting. Yeah, I'm not saying he's a liar, but I, I don't know whether he's been scammed or something. I'm not sure. So even Gerald says it looks like 360. Yeah, there's something a bit weird going on. Um, Hero says, this sounds like a job for conspiracy theories. Uh, they are giving the A6300 a new hinge and updated firmware, and boom, you have an A6400. Yeah, I, I think the guy has been ripped off, I think. Mine is uh, soft 1080. Uh, looks soft. Yeah, there's something not right. Um, Justin says, yeah, looks low res. Yeah, I don't know what's happened, guys. Need to shine up your forehead some. <laughs> You look a bit soft, but it's okay though. Dylan says, I stream in uh, 144p because my Wi-Fi is so slow. Uh, looks good to me. All right, let's go to the next story. How long have we been on anyway? One hour, 10 minutes. Now, I just wanted to show this quickly because this is interesting if you're into the A6000 series. Sony Alpha showed this visual comparison between all of the cameras. Uh, and this is quite interesting if you look how similar they are, but they only change very small things. I was just going to look at my A6400 and the um, A6300 to see if I can see. No, it looks exactly the same. So the A6400 to me does look exactly the same in the body. Uh, I'm just trying to see if it... Yeah, it looks exactly the same. I don't think there's any difference. It's definitely the A6300 body that's in the A6400. You can see that the A6500 has... Uh, a much bigger grip than the A6400. For some reason they haven't put the A6300 in there and that may be because it's exactly the same body. Uh, and I think that's probably what's happened here. So this shows you that um, the A6400 is a definite upgrade from the A6300, not the A6500. Uh, and I just checked then uh, looking at both of those cameras and the bodies are absolutely identical uh, if you look at them. Hope uh, this won't. You know, I was just checking the top of them and the body, the grip does look exactly the same. Um, so that sort of proves that they've used the A6400 parts apart from uh, the swivel screen, the folding mechanism, but everything else looks exactly the same. Uh, whereas the A6400 has that much bigger uh, handle on the body or grip. Uh, there you can see that there. So that's quite interesting apart from that, you know that they are all looking exactly the same very very similar uh, But it's just an interesting comparison uh, as well. I'm just checking what uh, Trevor's saying here Trevor's saying uh, 720p and 1080p stream look the same. You're getting throttled for some reason. Yeah, maybe YouTube It might be doing that uh, I'm just checking my health Yeah, it is saying that the bit rate is lower than recommended. So perhaps it's just my bit rate is down. Uh, you just did YouTube, David. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, so let's go. I'm not going to talk about that much. I'm just going to go to the next story, um, which is this one. Now, this is I wanted to share this because I wanted to give Sigma a bit of a shout out um, because this is a really interesting one. We were going to talk about this on the show I did with Aaron the other day, but we ran out of time. So I'll come up with some other stories for that show next week. Um, but Sigma really have done so much for APS-C and if you look at the lenses that are out there, like the 16mm that they've got is, is a beautiful lens that, that's there. Uh, you know, they really have got some amazing lenses out there at the moment. Um, and they're probably the only lens manufacturer that's given really some love uh, for Sigma. And that's why I wanted to sort of show this because it says, uh, Sigma has done more for the enthusiast APS-C market than Nikon, Canon and Sony combined. And I think this is true. Like I said, early on, I, I, was, I wasn't really that wrapped in how the lenses worked uh, on APS-C or, or uh, the full frame, but they've really upped their ante now. And I know a lot of you are talking about how much they love the 16, for instance. Um, I think that's a 1.4 lens, isn't it, the 16? 
and I think there's a 51.4 as well. But they really have, and they really are bringing out some amazing lenses for APS-C. And I, I wanted to share this story because I did want to give them a shout out that a lot of people are saying that APS-C has been given no love, but I think they have given a lot of love to uh, APS-C, particularly to Sony, but also other manufacturers as well. Um, they, they, their lenses tend to be absolutely amazing quality, uh, beautiful um, depth of field and separation, uh, great focus on the lenses, the way they work. They now are silent uh, compared to what they used to be, but they really are bringing out amazing lenses. You can see here, this is the Sigma 16 1.4, and they're saying there it's a fantastic lens for Sony E-mount and of course micro four thirds. It is a decent lens size though, but you'd expect that for a 1.4 lens. But they really are bringing out beautiful. Uh, they're saying here that it's also got the 30 and the 56 1.4 as well. And all of those lenses, from what I've heard, I haven't tried those lenses, I must try them. But all of those lenses have been given great reviews by people that have used them. So when people say that there's no uh, really good lenses for the Sony APS-C line. I don't think that's true. I, th I can understand if you say that for uh, Sony itself, yes, I agree with that completely. But if you're dealing with um, Sony uh, and Sigma, they, they have done an amazing job and, and I think it's really great what they've done. Uh, and I wanted to give them a shout out for that. Let me know in the chat uh, now. We'll have a discussion about that in a minute. But also let me know in the comment box down below what you think about that 16 uh, 1.4, what do you think about the 30 and also the 56? I've heard nothing but good re uh, reports about them. Uh, so let me know. And someone's just said in the chat, the 18 to 35 is legendary. Yes, it is. I tried that with my GH5 and I loved it. Um, but let me know what you think about that because I'd be really curious uh, to know. So lastly, let's open it up to Q&A before we finish. Um, so anything that you think is interesting, guys, um, I'm just going back to see here what people are saying. They're just talking about my stream saying it looks a bit soft. Um, I can't see the web page. Did I do that again, did I? Uh, we can see you now. The picture looks good at my end. Uh, Justin said um, they might ha not have switched it on on purpose, just printed a limited run by mistake. Well, yeah, I don't know about that camera. It, I'm really a bit iffy about it, to be honest. Uh, Eric said, also, could the USB connection from the camera to computer also may explain the AF issue? Yeah, maybe, but it usually works, and that's why I don't understand why it's just had a problem on itself. It's not using USB anyway, it's using um, HDMI uh, straight into a Ultra Studio Mini recorder. I'm just going to have to have a look at it later and check to see why it's out of focus. Don't know what's going on. Um, Gerald says, is the resolution being transmitted no better? Well, yeah, it might not be. It is saying that I'm suffering a bit in the bit rate though, is lower than recommended. Uh, we, re we recommend that you stream using a bit rate of four, 500 KBS. Um, it's saying it's lower than recommended. Yeah, it might be that I've just got problems with the net here today. So it may be uh, being down sampled and that's probably what's happening. Um, I've, al I've also, YouTube resolution quality has been reduced lately. 720p looks worse now. Um, Trevor said, uh, removing stabilization may have helped with the heat issues. Yeah, it may too. I'm gonna do a heat issue test. It's only 25 today though, here, but I believe in the coming days we're gonna get back up to 30, so stay tuned. I'm gonna give it a real Aussie heat test for you guys to see how it lasts. The A9 and the A7R, I think lasted about, the A7 III lasted about 27 minutes. Uh, so I'll let you know. Um, the Sigma APS-C lenses are amazing. Uh, and I said the 18 to 135 is legendary. Yes, it certainly is. David made it clear from the beginning his channel is Sony-centric. Why, someone said something. Um, T-Draw, yes it is. Look, th this show is Sony-centric today. If you wanna watch a program that is not Sony-based, uh, you need to watch our show with um, Aaron on Tuesday's US time and Tuesday uh, Europe time. It's Wednesday here in Australia. That's open to everything. But to, to Droid, this is a Sony rumors and news show. That's what the Friday show is. Um, I didn't even say if he said anything about it, but I don't know where he said it, but are there. You only talk about stuff relating to Sony, truly a fanboy. It's just this show... Uh, to Droy. Uh, you, like I said, don't watch it if you're not into Sony. This show is for Sony users. 
Um, Sigma 56 is one of the sharpest lenses for Sony APS-C. How good is the 16 too, guys? I'd love you to let me know how good that lens is because I'm really curious to know. Really appreciate it too if we can have a thumbs up, guys. That really helps my channel. Remember, I'm not sponsored by anyone uh, and sharing just gets me out there. So would really appreciate it if uh, you could share it. We've got 170 watching, uh, 175, and we've got 74 ups. I really would appreciate it, guys, if you could. Um, Ray said the APS-C Sigma has been great. Yes, it has. Justin said, did that unnamed photographer get hold of the, your A74 before the stream? <laughs> A72, I mean. Um, do you feel Micro Four Thirds will last since Panasonic has gone full frame? Yes, I do. I think they're going to be around for a while yet. The GH5 is still an amazing camera, and I think they'll, they'll sell both cameras uh, together. But I'm not sure about the long term, how Panasonic's, if they're going to be able to support both platforms. We're going to have to wait and see on that one to see how they will go. I hope it survives. I really do. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Carl said, it's not a focus problem. Yeah, it's probably just this down sampling, probably. Um, but I'll do a test when I finish because I'll record directly to my computer and see if it looks all right. That's one way that I can test it. So I'll test it once we finish this uh, live stream. Carl said, it's not a focus problem. James said, the chat... Screen is in and out of focus. Uh, it, it, is it related? No, not the chat screen. No, it shouldn't be. So obviously, is if the screen you're looking at with the chats going in and out of focus as well, it's a YouTube problem. Um, James said, uh, to Joy said, uh, Flory, okay, sorry, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, the Friday one uh, to Joy is only Sony related. So if you're not interested in Sony stuff, it's better not to watch this one. Uh, like I said, my other streams, particularly the Wednesday is open to everything. That's where I do a live show with Aaron and we discuss everything camera related. Um, the show with Aaron is terrific. Thanks so much, uh, Trev. You know what? There's nothing like that show on the net, I don't believe, where... We're talking about video, we're talking about stills, we've got open to everything. We've got two working professionals on that show talking about stuff, uh, answering questions, and I really do hope it takes off. Um, and I'm sure it will over time. We've got to give it time to grow, but I really do think the format is really great. And thanks so much for saying that, Trev. Uh, I have got a, a replay of it down below. If you wanted to watch it, you can go back and see the last one. It's the um, photography uh, behind the photo show. So check that out if you'd like to see that. Uh, Eric said, we'll probably use the Sigma 16 1.4 on the A6500 this weekend for video. Cool. Uh, Brad said, I think that might be a really good video uh, lens to put on a gimbal as well. Um, Brad said, uh, plenty of channels out there covering everything from uh, Rico and Laker uh, shop around. Um, is that what you shoot to, Broy? I'm not saying don't follow me, but yeah, this show particularly. And look, I am, I really only do shoot with Sony gear. And like I said, I've always been honest to people about that. The Probably the only show you may love is the one on the... Uh, Tuesday if you're from the US, because that's open to everything. That's certainly not Sony-centric, um, and it's more about the art and stuff like that. But if you watch my videos where I shoot and stuff, even though I'm using Sony gear, I am shooting for art. So it wouldn't matter what gear you use, and if I'm using flash and stuff like that, it wouldn't matter what gear you use. Uh, so, And I certainly don't bag other gear, apart from the when I was say I'm not happy with what Canon released. I talk about Fuji as being great all the time. I talk about the GH5 was being great all the time. So I'm certainly uh, giving other cameras credit when they need it. Um, still waiting on my tree and flower autofocus firmware. You may not get that because I have been specially looked after by Sony with that uh, autofocus. Uh, Floria said, no problem, Detroit. No one got upset. If you hang in here with us long enough, you will see that we are quite warm and friendly. I, for one, shoot Canon big time and Sony. Yeah, it's never about bashing, that's for sure. Uh, Henry said, uh, Sigma 16mm is one of my favourite APS-C lenses. Absolutely must have for gim uh, gimbals. Thanks, Harry. Ian. That's certainly one where I might find it interesting. Is it very heavy, though? Because it does look very front heavy. Um... The 24 1.8 G Master is finally being shipped nationwide. Oh, cool. Uh, I haven't seen that in the shops here yet, though, the G Master. Justin said, I'm interested in the 17 to 28. Uh, is there must, it's a must use for photography. I don't do much with video at this point. Uh, yeah, it'll be a great, I think it will be a great all round lens. Um, 
Florio said, David actually mentioned many times he wishes every manufacturer out there would do great because otherwise Sony might become comfortable innovating. And, and that's the true I do. I hope every manufacturer survives. And I really do hope everyone does well. I would hate to see Canon. I would hate to see Panasonic or Fuji or uh, Nikon go out of business. It would be the worst thing ever for our industry. Uh, I certainly don't want that at all. Um, Shane said 24 uh, 1.4 G Masters are soon back are soon back on back order. Yeah, that's because they'll they'll come in and go out straight away and then I'll immediately be put on back order again. Uh, Dean said the 16 millimeter is great. Well, we've reached the end. Unless there's other some other quick chats, guys. Thank you so much for liking the show too, everyone. Really do appreciate that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you do subscribe, particularly if you like a bit of my nutty sense of humor. Um, so please do. Uh, I am now producing other videos with Aaron as well, and the channel is definitely growing. Uh, stay tuned for some more A6400 videos, which will be posted uh, in the coming days, so stay tuned for that. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be away for the weekend. I'm going to try, if I can, if I get the time to do that menu for the A6400 today and post that probably first thing tomorrow morning. Um, and then I'll have a review up early next week of the A6400, uh, so stay tuned for that. A lot of people are saying they use the... Oh, someone, Stu, is saying he also uses the Sigma 16mm for Astro as well. Uh, cool. Great. All right, guys. Well, we might leave it there. Um, obviously, if you have any other questions down below, uh, leave those down be uh, below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, anything you'd like to sort of comment about the show, please check Aaron and my show out that I've posted down below. Subscribe to Aaron. Uh, obviously he's listed in that show there as well. Subscribe to Aaron to see the, to see the show live if you want to uh, ask questions and stuff uh, live. Uh, it really is a good show. For the coming weeks, I'm going to be streaming it, uh, a replay of it on my channel just to get that show to grow. Um, we're just going to have to see how it goes uh, in the meantime because uh, it's going to take a while for all the uh, people to go and subscribe to Aaron, so we'll just see how it goes. Uh, and video settings, yes, I will show that... Um, Altric, uh, when the when the firmware for the A9 comes out, I'll do it because I think the A9 is going to become much much more popular, and I th particularly with that new firmware coming out, um, like uh, I think it was Altric or someone said there's a five hundred dollar discount for the A9 there now. I honestly, if you have the money, I would buy that camera because I adore that camera. I, I, it is amazing. With the new updates that are going to be coming out, it's going to take it to a new level. It's like you're buying a new camera. Uh, for less than, way less than what that was the original price of that camera. It's also my favorite video camera as well. So once the firmware comes out, I'll do a video run through of all my settings on that too, because the menus are going to change. Uh, so I'll do that as a full setup uh, for that camera as well. So apart from that, everyone, um, see you all in the next video. Thank you. Uh, like I said, I got a lot of downvotes, but that doesn't worry me, to be honest. It's more about me. Uh, you know how I am, and it's more about me working and being real for you guys that are out there. So see you all soon for the next video. Um, there is a link in the description. I'm sure I'll put one in there. If not, I'll stick one in uh, of Aaron's site. Uh, check you all soon now for the next uh, video, guys. Have a great weekend, everyone.